Hello, my name is Terry Dean Nemers, and on July 6, 2011, and again on September 7, 2011, I was maliciously arrested by the lawless thugs down here in the lawless Pope County Sheriff's Department, and I'm now being maliciously prosecuted by the lawless Pope County uh, Attorney's Office. Today is October 31st, 2011, yes, it's Halloween, and uh, just give you an update on my malicious prosecution kangaroo court hearing down here in the lawless shithole called Glenwood, Minnesota. All right. And uh, they weren't wearing devil costumes, but old Todd the Crook Roth and Judge the Crook Glassroot certainly were acting like Satan today, weren't they? Oh, it was hilarious. Old nicey, nicey Judge Glassroot wasn't very nicey, nicey today. I got his little goat, didn't I? Yeah. See, the thing is, when I kept up bringing the facts that they're still withholding exculpatory evidence, he didn't like that fact. Exculpatory evidence is evidence that proves that I am innocent. Now, if you remember from my previous um, videos, old Todd promised at the September t or at the uh, September 23rd hearing, kangaroo court hearing, that he had sent me all this information like a video from the the uh, law enforcement center when I first walk in the door so you could see you know they said that I, they confused me for a construction worker you, you can see on the video on the, my second time in that it says no kangaroo court clearly on the video you can see the hat says Axe 529 holding a camera I don't look anything like a construction worker okay but obviously they're scared of the information that's on that video of the first time when I went in. Because this mysterious, this mysterious worker, you know, who they have video of walking in the door, they still have no idea who he is. They know who he works for. for how do they know who he works for, but they don't know who he is? Secured facility. Kept bringing these questions up, and Judgey Wudgey got kind of upset about that, because I kept on saying, oh, hey, this is all what I was promised at your last hearing. Oh, I never got it. And Todd Roth just goes, oh, well, it says on my piece of paper that I sent you a DVD. That must be what I sent you then, because there's an affidavit. Well, there's an affidavit saying that you sent this in Glenwood, too. Doesn't it, Todd? But it took two days to get here. And your other mail has a postmark of Minneapolis on it. Doesn't it? See? All these little scandals. And remember, folks, who has the order? Who is the order against for withholding evidence in both cases? Not me. I didn't have it written against me. No, it was against Todd Roth. But, of course, Judgey Wudgey Glazerud was saying, Oh, whatever, whatever Todd says, it must be right because he's honest as the day is long. Well, you don't remember that you wrote this? And, of course, I brought up the fact that uh, Judge John Stapschult made sure that on September 23rd that I didn't have my evidence for my second case. See? The guy who signed my order of detention for an illegal raid on my house, first-degree burglary, where the sheriff, now Sheriff Riley, committed perjury. Yeah, they didn't like that when I brought that up. Well, that, that has nothing to do with this. Really? Sounds like a history of perjury, doesn't it? Sounds like a history of withholding evidence, doesn't it? Because I said, they never produced this. That's withholding, isn't it? Yeah, see? So Judgey Wudgey got real upset about that. He really did. And again, in the second case, uh, I brought up the fact that uh, I still haven't got the names, addresses, phone numbers. Oh, well, actually, for both cases. You know, because he said, well, they, you got the names for those two women who were in, in the in the uh, law enforcement center. Of course, he didn't remember where it was. He couldn't even remember which case we were talking about half the time. But also, I said, well, geez, I remember uh, it, you were saying at the last hearing that it was something about an order of protection. But according to the newspaper, she was there for drugs. And in the newspaper, they put her address. But for some reason, you, had, you wanted me to submit some motion uh, so I, so you, you would give me public information that's in the newspaper? But you aren't going to give me your phone number? You aren't going to give me the name, address, and phone number of the guy who's the worker who's in there, who you have video of? 
and you're not going to give me the name, addresses, and the phone numbers of all the people who are in, who are at the at the uh, Levin Township meeting, who it says is specifically in all the witness state or all the statements from the witnesses that they took, the guys who are committing perjury against me, coming up with false statements against me. I should say they're coming up with false statements. They're conspiring to, to engage in perjury because Thuggo the cop is the one who's committed perjury. Okay? They're planning on committing perjury yet. That's their plan. Okay? So it's all these little things. And Judgy Wudgy just got so upset because I kept bringing up all these scandals, hitting all those hot button topics they don't want to talk about. See, that's what Judgy Wudgy didn't like. See, so, and of course, Mr. Roth does no evil, even though the own, the own, <laughs> his own court records show that they are withholding evidence. They are tampering with evidence. See? Oh, it's just because you don't understand how to follow instructions. <laughs> really? Then how come they had to give me new, new discs? See? No, the fact is they're all a bunch of criminals. It's a kangaroo court. The judge is just as crook as a dog's hind leg. Obviously, he must be watching my videos and seeing the pictures I made him because he did not like that. <laughs> he was short-tempered today. So and that's what I wanted, to get his goat. See? Bring up all these embarrassing facts. And the important thing is, what they don't want me to have is what I need to focus on. Remember, folks, they're scared of this information. That's why they don't want me to have it. So I just tailor my little presentation to focus on that. And remember... I can always bring this up any point in time during this kangaroo court trial. Oh, that was the other thing. Because he was trying to rush me through. Oh, it's already decided. There, are there. No, we're not going to talk about discovery anymore. Nope, you can't talk about it anymore. So, of course, I talked about it again. And he got really mad at me then. So he said, well, I don't know if I want to submit any motions. I said, oh, well, it's. Uh, I, I still haven't got my evidence because you can see the, the deputy is wearing a tape recorder on his chest in the video. The thing that was delayed, the thing that was suppressed by Judge John Staffschild, you know, see the guy who was involved in my illegal order of detention, see, that was delayed. So I said, and you can see the police, the, the officer, police officer wearing a, wearing a uh, recorder. Deputy had it here, cop has it here, see it on the video. Plain as day. I said, where's the 911 call? See? Where's all this information that I'm supposed to be getting? And the thing is, you can see from the video also, one of the guys who, who files a false criminal complaint against me toddles off with the deputy outside. Obviously, he took a statement from him, but mysteriously, the only statement is the next day, after they've obviously watched my video to get some little tidbits they can take off in there to smear me with. See? So, you know, they think I'm so stupid that I believe that the, they didn't search my, my video camera until a month later? I don't think so. I know they watched it that night. They, break, they broke into my house without a warrant. They don't care about warrants. They don't care about warrants. In fact, I met Jenny today. I found out who Jenny was, the guy who Chris, or the lady who Chris King talked to this morning who told Chris King that there is no warrant for their illegal entry into my home on July 20th, 2007. See, again, I'm going to bring this up over and over and over again. See, that's perjury, burglary, first degree, 20 years in prison. Those are little embarrassing facts. That's what they want me to bring up. See, so again, Judgy Wudgy was saying, do you want a jury trial? I said, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. Judgy wudgy. I didn't say judgy wudgy. But that was my attitude. So, he says, well then I'll decide. Really, judgy wudgy? You aren't going to decide shit. See, according to law, if I don't specifically say that I don't want a jury trial, you have to give me a jury trial. I've been through your rodeo once before. Twice before. Three times before. I know how it all works, judgy wudgy. See? So then he also tipped his hand at the end when he said, I'm going to give you some advice because I've been watching you each of these times and don't think that I don't know that you haven't been standing up. Now, maybe when it comes to this jury trial, remember, it's supposed to be, I'm not going to 
I'm going to decide whether it's going to be a jury trial. Judgey Wedgie's going to decide whether it's a jury trial. But also now he's mentioning that when the jury comes in, you better behave yourself. You better stand up, you know, because they're always watching you. I said, I don't care what they think. He says, yeah, I know. I've seen that. Yeah, you're right. Absolute contempt for kangaroo courts, that's why. Because they're nothing but a bunch of criminals down there. See, so obviously they're very, very worried about all these little scandals they've got going on there. They're hoping that I just break down and follow their little kangaroo court rules for their kangaroo court trial. Not going to happen, Judgy Wudgy. Not going to happen, Neil the Tamper and Nelson. See, you're going to get what you're going to get. Okay, so that was the update for today. Thank you for your time. Okay, uh, just a few minutes ago I received a phone call from Christopher King uh, at kingcast.net. He said that he received a phone call from a Jenny at the Lawless Pump County uh, Court Administrator's Office saying that he received an answer in regards to his request for uh, a copy of the warrant that the Lawless Pope County Sheriff's Department allegedly had on July 20th, 2007 to illegally invade my home. According to Jenny, there is no such warrant. So obviously my rights were violated by the lawless shithole called Pope County, Minnesota. My rights were violated by the criminal called Timmy the perjurer Riley, who is the new sheriff of Lawless, Pope County, Minnesota. Thank you.